The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Q101. All right, we got a lot for you today on Thursday. Coming up at 7.20, Clash with Kenzie. You get Jim Jeffries tickets for Chicago Theater. Super funny, dude. Uh, 8 o'clock, Ticket Puts Thursday. Riot Fest tickets starting at 8 and every hour. It'll go through our show, through Lauren's show, through Brian Phillips. And then at 9, still another chance for the Lumineers trip to L.A. For that. A lot going on. A lot going on. A lot of free stuff for you. Anyway, uh, so check in with us right now. Give us that proof of life. 312 591 8,300. I sound a little rough here. I got a little bit of a cold. Summer colds suck. God, what the hell? I don't know. What but did that's, you do? But that Sudafed, though, is that good good. You is that, that working for you? Yeah, Sudafed, it, well, it jacks you up. I mean, they make meth out of Sudafed. That's why you got to ask for it now, Walgreens. You, like, back in the day, you could go up and I buy Sudafed. That's all you have to do. You just got to ask for it. Yeah, not, well, that's true. They take your driver's license, though. So they what sca- does that do? Um, I guess they say this guy could be a meth dealer or he has a cold. Either one. So you get flagged. Do you get red flag? Yeah, you're red flag. So if you ask for, go back and ask for Sudafed the next day, they're like, oh, this guy doesn't have a cold. I mean, he got 12 pills yesterday. You only take like one every 12 hours. Is that true, though? So if you went to Walgreens today to buy more Sudafed, would you get denied? I, I've never tried to go back because I don't want to be flagged as a meth dealer. I mean, it's just something in my life I've I, I've aspired to not well, be I feel flagged like you have as. To bite the bullet and just see what happens. To try it out? Like for an experiment. Yeah. Has anybody ever bought Sudafed? Try to go back. And they say, no, you're a meth dealer. Or they just say no. <laughs> they might just say no. They could say that. So you got, you got enough yesterday, you're fine, you're good. It works. I know I don't sound that great right now, but it works. That it yeah, it doesn't sound like it works. It, no, I mean, but you can't sleep. Now I know why meth is probably so good for a lot of people that have problems with it. You know what I mean? Not necessarily. <laughs> I remember I was on a painkiller once after a surgery, and I don't, I, this is bad. But I, it was Thanksgiving, and I also had alcohol. Okay. And you know how they recommend, like, don't take this with alcohol. I'm like, they should recommend taking this with alcohol. Yeah. I've never felt better is that right? in my entire life. They should have cocktail recipes on yeah. the back. This is, it was amazing. I think it was, this is, it was a tough one because it was a surgery. I had, like, oxycodone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. That's the bad one. Oh, my God. I'm like, I get it. I would. I want this all the time. This is the best I've ever felt. This is the problem. I mean, that's why um, that's the biggest problem in America, right? I mean, is, is prescription drugs and the painkillers that are so good. And then you get addicted instantly. Like, the minute you have it. I remember I took Vicodin for oh. an injury, and I wasn't even in that much pain. But the guy gave me a whole bottle, like 90 pills. Oh, wow. So See, they, I, were, they were not loosey-goosey with the oxycodone. It was like, here's three, and you have to cut them in half. It's like, oh. Cut them in half? Yeah. That's, listen, I'm, you should not take any of these pills because they are super addictive. You should well, do, I, I was prescribed by your doctor. Even still. I mean, they, a lot of doctors just, like I said, this doctor gave me 90, and I wasn't even hurting that bad. I took two. What was and, the name of that doctor? <laughs> I, he's probably not practicing anymore. Yeah, probably not. I, I took two, and I like remember molding into my couch. It just felt like beautiful and glorious. I don't think you're supposed to take more than one at a time. Uh, I think it said two. I can't remember. I don't think it did. I was again. I just laid back, and I remember people are gonna call me a wuss or whatever. But I said I can't take these ever again. I, this is too good because I have an addictive personality. Like I once ate Ben and Jerry's fish food like 17 days in a row because it was so good when That's I discovered it. so different than Vicodin. But it's the same personality. I have that addictive personality. You're right. Uh, ben and Jerry's just makes you fat. The pills will kill you. Yeah, not good. You know good. what I mean? Yeah. They're, but they're so good. But you're, I mean, it, 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 they did it on purpose. There's a lot of studies that show out that, you know, these guys gave out too many pills back in the day. And that's why we have the big oxy problem good, in America. The good old taste. Yeah, right. But the Sudafed, you just go and ask for. So maybe today I'll go try and see if I can get some more. I don't know if anybody else tried that stuff, but, you know, to go back and you get denied for Sudafed is kind of embarrassing. You know what I mean? What if you're like, I'm buying it for somebody else? Yeah. Like, my friend's sick. The whole house has a cold. (laughs) We're not making math. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q.
101. Well, we may have gotten the answer to the Sudafed dilemma. I, I took some, and they always ask for your ID. You have to ask for it at the pharmacist. and It's not prescription stuff, Sudafed, but I know they make meth out of it. And they used to years ago, like it would disappear off the shelves, and that's why they started asking for you, I think. Uh, but Jeremy checked in, said, um, both my wife and I had a cold, tried to buy more Sudafed a day too early. They flagged us. They refused to sell us more, but... I had to talk to the actual pharmacist. He said they have a limit. Come back tomorrow. It's no big deal. Okay. Well, that's not going to stop meth, though. Well, yeah. what? Okay, calm down. People actually do need Sudafed. <laughs> not every single person. Trust me. It is the best. It, it, it keeps you awake. It jacks you up. That's why I guess meth is so good. First off, please. Okay. Everything you're saying right now is just a disaster. Why? Why? That's why meth's so good. And I you mean, should get more. And you should try this. Like, just stop. No, I'm saying that's why it must be so good and addictive to people because of what I see a little bit of it in Sudafed. No, you know I, I mean? get that because, like I said, I was... um. My painkiller that I got prescribed after a surgery, I got prescribed oxycodone. And yeah. I'm like, holy crap. Right? Like, you, I, I was blown away. I was light as a feather. I believed I could do anything. It was yeah. just, it was unbelievable. But luckily, I do not have an addictive personality. I felt lucky about that. And, and honestly, they were so, they're a lot stricter on stuff now. I got, I think, three, and they wanted me to cut them in half for, like, that was it. For the they they trusted you to cut them in half, though, huh? Yeah. Well, guess what? You're going to be in a lot of pain the other three days if you don't. That's right. So, no, thank you. Chef Sean checked in. I got hooked on Tylenol 3 after my wisdom teeth taken out 14 years at 14 years old. The th- hooked on Tylenol? Tylenol 3s. Those were prescription Tylenol. Oh. It's kind of what you took. It's like extra codeine. This oh. stuff is bad for you. That prescription drugs, man, it's better to deal with the pain. Um, and we got a, someone texting in. Which actually is really, this is a story that's too common. Hey, guys, listening to you this morning, this uh, checking in from 219. I'm on my way to work talking about opiates. I was on them for 17 years, prescribed by a doctor. I finally went to rehab, and I'm 420 days sober. Wow. The hardest thing to do, but there's an epidemic, and I was tired of being in Aww, one. Oh, good for you. That's amazing. That's Congratulations. Beth, Beth checking in from Valpo. Yeah, that's over a year. It is. I have friends that got this situation, and it is, it is the hardest thing to get uh, to stop. Oh, I'm just, it's, yeah. It's harder than alcohol, harder than weed, harder than anything. It's better to deal with the pain. I had someone tell me, I don't take pain pills anymore at all. I, I haven't taken them in years because I'll just, I'd rather have pain to know what my body is doing so I know if it's working or not. Well, I mean, that's one of the hardest things is that if you do have heavy pain and they put you on these, not only are you coming off of something that makes you feel good, you're now also experiencing pain. It's like a double whammy. You yeah. don't get to just feel normal. Yeah. So it's, it's super challenging because the they can numb you up now. It's it, it is crazy. It's too good. That was definitely my my first glimpse at it because before that I think the strongest thing I had was like a leave. <laughs> like that was I was like whoa this hey, is a different world. I'm telling you what don't sleep on a leave. It's some good stuff. It's some good stuff too. It works pretty good. But again don't take anything really if you can help it. Glenn, nice. checked, Glenn, Glenn checked in. Two things keep me from being an addict. I'm too lazy to hunt down and score a fix, and I'm kind of a cheapskate. Those are two good qualities. You, What you don't want to do is be on a budget while you're buying drugs. That's what you don't want to do. Yeah. You want to be on the corner like, hey, Glenn. Yeah. Well, listen, everybody out there, just be careful and don't take prescription pills if you can help it because they're the worst. That's our lesson this morning so far at 623 with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. <laughs> The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Time for a fact that makes your brain just go with Q101. And uh, one in four Chicagoans lie every day. Tell at least one lie a day. I think it's a low number. I think people tell more lies than that or more people tell a lie every day. And most of them are just nothing. Like, do you tell lies, Kenzie, just for, like, no reason? I've never told a lie. Oh. <laughs> Get it. Come on. Get it, because that would be a lie. <laughs> uh, I got it. Wait, let me hear you out. There you go. I tell lies for stupid reasons. For example, Case, the producer, I give him a ride home. He says, let's get lunch today. Go, oh, no, I got an appointment at, like, 120 that I got to get to. Like, I, he must think I'm going in for... You know, those, those leg lengthening surgeries or something that I have so many appointments to go in to check something out with a I doctor. I think that's what he thinks you're doing. Well, something like that. I, I think know. we think it's probably like your heart or something and yeah. not your legs. I really just want a nap. I don't want to interrupt the flow of the routine of getting home in time. And once in a while, I'll give him lunch. I think it was once <laughs> in two years. 
Yeah. But I just make that little lie because it makes my life easier. And it's not going to hurt him that much. It's not a big hurtful lie. So we're not getting lunch today. I lied to my son because oh. he he's always asking about ingredients in the food. Oh, boy. And for some reason, he he loves cucumbers. And he's decided out of nowhere he doesn't like zucchini. He likes zucchini. He just says he doesn't. It's like <laughs> one of those scenarios. And he'll ask me, like when I made the sausage skillet the other day, he's like, is this cucumbers or zucchini? And if I say cucumbers, he thinks it tastes delicious. And if I say zucchini, he thinks it doesn't. So I just say cucumbers every time. Because then he's like, oh, God, I can tell it tastes better. It's like, okay. Doesn't he listen right now? I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. No, he's definitely not up. It's 637. Okay. Whew. That's the bullet with that one. Around 8 o'clock, I'm not going to readdress this. Yeah, no, let, don't, ever, don't anybody talk about it. What she said, don't talk about Kenzie's kid around there with zucchini and cucumbers. Oh, God. But you can tell when someone's lying. Do you ever tell when you know someone's lying to you? Is there something you see in them? Well, that... it's different per person. I feel like I can tell when people are lying because they just act a little different. Yeah. Well, for example, they won't look you in the eye is the number one. 84% of people say that's a red flag when you see someone not looking you in the eye. They'll start looking to the side. They'll start pacing a little bit when they're saying something, getting a little animated, fidgeting. Some people start sweating when they lie. That's a little That's a little much. My husband gets, like, feistier. Yeah? Like... I, I, he's already trying to be like very, very defensive when he lies. Yes. You know, so it's he's he's immediately ready to it's like, okay, bring it down a notch. Obviously you're not telling the truth because this question's a very normal one and you're angry. Yeah, you're you're late. You probably went to get ice cream, didn't you? Why why are you accusing me? No, I didn't. You never believed it. It's like, whoa, okay, a lot of baggage just rolled in. Becoming the victim instantly is a great way to go. Yeah. Because then it makes the other person feel bad sometimes. Not you, but no, no, other, other I don't people. feel bad. Um, I talk higher, apparently. I go, no, no, that's not true at all. You know. I go high. Yeah. And, I, and really, sometimes I'm doing that, and I am telling the truth. But now it's become a tell on me, like a poker hand, that I'm lying if my voice goes up high. So that's I'm just letting you know what, what that's one for me. Okay. I feel like I don't have one. Yeah? Or at least no one's shared it with me. I don't have an obvious one. Hmm. I, mean, I always crush the game, like two truths and a lie. Yeah? I always won. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm good at that. It's a little straight face. I, everyone always thinks that when I laugh, I am lying. Hmm. Because, like, if I tell you something and I start laughing. But sometimes it's like I'm just sharing something with you and I know you're not going to believe me because it's so outrageous and it makes me laugh. Hmm. So it's not a tell, but like my, like my husband always says, he's like, look me in the eye and don't laugh. I'm like, well, I'm for sure going to laugh now yeah. because you told me not to. I'm assuming now every time you laugh, you're lying. That's going to be always. <laughs> And those are some facts that make your brain go, one in four people you're going to run into today are lying to you. You have to decide which one's lying based on some of these things. And how big of a lie is it? Is it something that's really, you know, going to affect your life? Or it's just not me not taking, like, case to producer to lunch because I just don't feel like it. A little lie. You're probably really hurting his feelings right now. He can hear us. Oh, I thought I turned off the sound of his little room over there. You can see on the cameras, he has this little, like, bunker in there, a little glass-enclosed case. With no lunch in it. No, no lunch <laughs> It's a Q lunchless one. case. <laughs> it's Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Before we move on, a couple follow-ups to lying. Uh, Kenzie was talking about how she lies to her son about eating zucchini and cucumbers. He loves cucumbers, hates zucchini, but he's really eating zucchini and doesn't know it. Yes, he just... It's the same food. If I say that it's cucumber wrapped instead of zucchini wrapped or it's a cucumber noodle instead of a zucchini noodle or... Whatever. He's like, oh, it's delicious. Yeah, I can tell this is a cucumber. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Now, 219 checked in. My sister was the same. We would cook with deer meat. And if we told her it was beef, it's delicious. But deer, oh, my God, that's disgusting. Exactly. And, you get in your own head and you tell yourself how something tastes sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I think you could, deer meat, venison. Is really good. It's really good, but it's also going to be gamey if it's not cooked right. You, I can tell it's deer meat. And your sister, maybe she has a problem with her smell. I don't know. Maybe she needs some Sudafed. What is with you and the drugs today? <laughs> uh, it's a Q101, Brian and Kenzie. So yesterday at this time, we played some audio of a woman on a plane going nuts. Thought she saw somebody that wasn't real. I'll let her explain the audio. This is the actual audio from the plane. I'm telling you, I'm getting the f*** off. And there's a reason why I'm getting off and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. But I am telling you right now... Back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and you can die with them or not. I'm not going to. So you got off the plane. They had to deboard the plane. Five hours for all those people to get back on a new plane. They had to examine all oh. the luggage. They had to go through every piece of it. 
to figure out what was going on because of what she said was, you know, kind of terrifying. Right. No one knows what's going on. You got to take some precautions there. And so it got to the point where we got into discussion and went to a little wormhole on it where some of the people on the plane said that she had her ear pods like that stolen. That story, okay, so that story does not check out now. Now it's taken a totally different turn. And she was talking about a guy in a green hoodie who what she was having a conversation with and he was really non-responsive. And a lot of people are claiming on the plane they never heard this guy talk even when the uh, the, uh, the airline hostesses would like walk up. They're like, is everything okay? He would just like nod his head. Like there's no words that ever came out of this guy's mouth. And she was having this conversation with them and it just kind of took a weird left turn where she started getting freaked out while she was talking to him. And other people said she was drunk. So who knows what the truth is? Wait, I will say though, if anything, that whole vibe gives me medicated, not drunk. Drunk is slurry, messy. She didn't seem like that. Like she walked, a, she got up and walked a straight light off and her words weren't slurred. That would, that didn't, that didn't give off drunk to me personally. Either way, maybe enhanced. But one of the guys on the flight, we found so much audio of people on the flight. And this guy claims there was maybe a very weird character on the plane that was very suspicious and maybe warranted her behavior. Here's what he said. I was on that flight. It was American Airlines. We were leaving Dallas, Fort Worth. I was sitting in the left aisle about three rows back from this woman. She was sitting in the right aisle and she had this very interesting exchange with some dude in a hoodie. What I remember is she ha- was having like a full-blown conversation with this dude in the hoodie. I'll call him the hoodie guy. She was okay. having a full-blown conversation with hoodie guy. The weird thing was that he never once said a word to her the whole time. And at the time, I I don't know, I wasn't really thinking about it. But it was like she it's like she would say something and he like would respond, but there was no exchange happening. It was just her getting more and more frantic. Which, okay, if she's drunk and she's going crazy, then you would think the dude in the hoodie would have been like, What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? But he was just like dead locked on her, like deep eye contact with her, like like I don't want to feed into the conspiracies here, but like, like almost like she was like in a hypnosis type of thing. And she didn't seem drunk to me, by the way. Just, uh-huh. just throwing that out there. She, I didn't, I didn't see her drink. I mean, she didn't. She seemed totally normal to me up until that point. The weird thing was after she left the plane, the dude in the hoodie, which the flight attendant was like, "Did anything happen?" And he still didn't say a word. He just went like, and like shrugged. The dude in the hoodie like looked around the plane, and he looked back at me. And he winked at me. And again, I didn't quite register it. I was like, okay, what the f*** is that about? I was like, maybe he's just being like an ass, like winking. Like, that was weird, wasn't it? But now that I look back, I realized that when he winked at me, and it was his left eye looking back at me, it didn't wink like this. It winked like this. <laughs> so he's saying it blinked sideways. Like right, an, it didn't bl- it blinked the opposite horiz- horizontal. Yeah, right? his, his eyelids went like whoop, whoop. Like curtains, as opposed to like how your eyelids go up and down. Don't oh, make me get off of a plane. I'm just saying. It's amazing the amount of eyewitness accounts on this story with this woman. Now, I've seen Alien where they, yeah, they blink sideways. That's what they do. Aliens. Well, lizard that's, people. That's how they be. Lizards, iguanas. We talked about the lizard people yesterday. I do think it's strange. And again, maybe this guy is lying or whatever. But well, I do yeah. think it's strange that she's getting kicked off and she's saying... This guy, this guy, this guy, that's what the frantics is about. But they didn't have to interview him or ask him questions. Like, I, I don't, I feel like on a plane, if a guy just shrugged, they wouldn't accept that. They'd be like, you need to start saying words. Like, hello, communicate. Are you an alien? Blink. Yeah. Just like, something like that. You blink. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's pretty wild. Of all things, though, <laughs> to be on this plane and someone to bring maybe some kind of sense of, you know, what really happened was Carrot Top. The comedian Carrot Top was on the plane, too. <laughs> and here's what he said about it. Hi, everyone. I uh, just want to let you know I made it home. Uh, <laughs> I give uh, my hats off to everyone at American Airlines uh, today for ha- how they handled the situation. That nut job just lost your mind in front of the whole plane. A five hour later, we're here in Orlando. I hope you're having a uh, relaxing evening behind bars in Dallas, Texas. Hope he enjoyed your little stunt. Well, see, now he doesn't believe any of it, but he wasn't necessarily saw the eyes so, blink sideways. See, here's the thing. That's a little, 
That's a little feistier than it needs to be. Well, it's also Carrot Top. I mean, it's just like a little road, <laughs> Carrot Top. Like, settle down. Because, um, you know, I feel like you don't have all the details. But then again, if you're on that plane, if you were on that plane... I understand the anger. However, yeah. if this alien was going to, like, cause havoc on that plane, then everyone should think her. Hmm. Like, she may have saved lives. We don't know. She may have saved lives. We... Don't know, but she's our queen. If, a, if I felt, if I heard an alien telepathically communicate with me and then blink the other direction, I would get off the plane. She's not a genuinely terrifying. Like you, 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 the Karens who get off the plane, yes, and they're angry, and yeah. it's so annoying. They get in an argument with a flight attendant because they deserve something, and it's annoying. I will say she's not a terrified. She did. I don't know, and that's that gives me the heebie-jeebies. I just want to see the guy blink sideways. I want to see it so bad. Oh, God, so much. Well, there you go. There's the update on the airline story. Or you can believe Carrot Top or the dude who saw the guy next to the woman blink sideways. Or you can believe her. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. My Chem last year, of course, at Riot Fest. And Ticket Blitz Thursday starts at 8. Riot Fest tickets for this year, including the Foo Fighters, The Cure, Death Cab for Cutie, Queens of the Stone Age, Turnstile, uh, all of it at Q101.com, all the information about Riot Fest. So Ticket Blitz Thursday launches at 8. Right here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. First, let's get to Gil right now. This is not headline news. Experts say most of that Chinese spy balloon was American-made. I always wondered what was in the espionage aisle at Party City. Subway says it will now slice its deli meat daily so it's fresher. However, they promise to continue to serve tuna salad in an ice cream scooper. The Secret Service is investigating a bag of cocaine that was found in the White House. No one believes it was President Biden's because his speeches never run long. <laughs> and Heather Locklear was seen acting erratically in Malibu. The case is being investigated by the Malibu PD's Heather Locklear unit. This is not headline news. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.